man, when you mess up, just own up to it. It's gonna make things so much less messy in the long run. After getting promoted at work, I thought I was immune to making mistakes. I thought I was invincible, that I could do no wrong. I thought I had made it. And then yesterday I got fired. And it was only like, like 60% my fault. But my biggest mistake by far was, you know, refusing to own up to it when I got my coworker killed. So don't make my mistake, boys and girls. Just tell people when you mess up instead of trying to hide it. Well, I guess that's the story we're going with this week. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I am Richard, and I am so glad that you could be here today. Now, my buddy Michael here did do a good job telling us why you should own up to your mistakes, though some do learn harder than others. Now, before I go on, a friendly reminder that if you like the story, it is available in short story form over on Substack for free. Link is gonna be in the description. Along with some of my other short stories, like the Accounts of the Holy Domain series, which I really think you guys would enjoy. But today, we're here to listen to the tale of the Riverside Rocket Program and all the things that went wrong. So, just so many things that went wrong. So sit back, pour yourself a drink, and enjoy a tale from the world of New Memphis. Not that I would ever brag, but I build rockets for a living. Or at least I, I did. My father used to tell me stories about the long, long ago when mankind stepped foot on the moon and battled the bloodthirsty moon people who hate freedom and barbecues. But that was a very long time ago. Until one day I was working in New Memphis as a clerk at the patent office and a man submitting designs for a new type of engine asked me, son, you know anything about physics? And I told him, nope but I know chemistry when I see it. And that's how I got the job. Oh, and they took this other guy too, Al. Uh, I'm not even sure why he worked there. That it kept his mind busy. Anyway, the next morning we left New Memphis for the town of Riverside, along with this guy, Bobby, who seemed like a cool guy. Now Riverside is right along the Grand River. While it's technically part of the Riverlands, which is the territory of New Memphis, it's also the closest city geographically to Magnus Bray. And those two cities have a long rivalry I just don't have time to cover. Suffice to say, the High Magistrate from Magnus Bray is always investing in weird projects in Riverside they could slap their name on. So we reached the build site, or more of a dumping ground for the used parts taken from the ancient machines all over the Riverlands. The site was near the seawall, or river wall, I guess? A brick structure made from the bones and rebar of other structures long since fallen. It wasn't long before we started building our first rocket, or I guess I should say Al started building it. He was always tinkering with those parts and machines that they dug up, that idiot. Bobby and I kept trying to tell him if we finished the project, they might pull the funding. So every night I would go back and, you know, yank a few wires out of his toys, maybe swap the gears around, but he would always fix them the next day, that idiot and then just keep quietly working on the rocket. But don't you worry, dear viewers. We made a plan to put Al in his place once and for all. Uh, too bad it went horribly, horribly wrong. Okay, so the plan was simple. If Al liked rockets so much, Bobby and I would give him the chance to test one out. So one day after waking up at noon and arriving at work by 4 p.m., Bobby and I walked in to find him already there working, the tryhard, already having replaced all the wiring we worked so hard to pull out yesterday. But today was different. It was something in the air we could just feel as soon as we got there, this presence. We saw them soon after, Magnus Bray's most feared enforcers, the accountants. I'm not joking, Magnus Bray doesn't usually pay attention, but once they do, you don't want to get caught between them and their money. That's why I was working so hard to rip all that wiring out. If we actually finished the project, the High Magistrate would send someone to like, ask questions, hold us to account, test our work. We didn't want that. But despite all my careful planning and hard work, the accountants had come anyway, and they had a lot of questions I was struggling to answer. Like, how do rockets work? Luckily, I had an answer for that. Not only do I know how rockets work, I know how to make rockets work for you.
and then they stopped asking questions, which is great because I didn't have any more answers. But at least my job was safe. For now. Man, the only thing harder than building a rocket is pretending you know how to build a rocket. Exhausting stuff. The accountants never left, so Bobby and I started showing up early, helping move stuff, writing propaganda, <sighs> all the important things that needed doing. And it was fine, I guess. Basically just a regular job. Up until Bobby and Al started getting chummy. Then they started hanging out outside of work. I mean, come on. Bobby seemed like such a cool guy. We were gonna blast Al into orbit like two weeks ago, but now they were friendly? It just burned me. And to make things worse, then the accountant started asking more questions. Something about cutting waste. If they wanted to cut waste, Bobby was the obvious choice. He wouldn't even help me rip wiring out of the rocket anymore. Did I even know how rockets work? Of course I know how rockets work. You just press this button here. Bobby? Now, we weren't totally sure that Bobby was on that rocket, which is exactly what I told the accountants. I am not totally sure that he was on that rocket. I'm not sure of anything. I cannot confirm nor deny anything that has ever happened, ever. They did not seem very happy with that answer, but since they couldn't prove that Bobby was on the rocket, and since the rocket was, you know, in space, uh, they let Al and I go back to work on building. Meanwhile, though, they had a talk with the guy who recruited me. And they had talks with a few other guys working on the site. Until it was just Al and I left, with the accountants pacing back and forth on the river wall all day, watching us, getting us to work. It seemed like so long since we worked together in that patent office. But if my six months as a rocket scientist had taught me anything, it was to press buttons and hope for the best. But as I was searching for new and interesting control panels, I saw the accountants talking to Al. And then they just let him keep working on the new rocket unimpeded. I mean, <sighs> look, at least they were gone now. They finally left. And thanks to Al for talking them into leaving. You know, I appreciate that. So I went up to him and I said, you know, man, I don't blame you for what happened to Bobby. And then they fired me. That's the story of how I became a rocket surgeon for like six months. But hey, you know, at least, uh, at least nobody found out what happened to poor Bobby. Thank God for that. <laughs> 